padding and stride. So remember, when we do this convolution, right, then, you know, our kernel scans over the image. This is, you know, one of those infamous fashion MNIST pullovers, right? Pullovers because it's a German data set and the German virtual sweater is pullover. And so they translated it quite literally. Um, yeah. So anyway, so you have like a 32 by 32 image, input image. And you apply a convolution with a 5 by 5 kernel. And you get a 28 by 28 output after one layer. And after seven layers, you have a 4 by 4 output. And at that point, it's game over. You can't convolve any further. You're out of pixels. So in other words, your image keeps on shrinking because you always end up peeling things away at the fringes. And if you have a really large image, well, you know, you don't really care about maybe a one or two pixels among friends, but after a while, you start running out of pixels. And if your convolutional kernel is large, this goes very quickly. So if you look at it, we have, you know, image height minus kernel height plus one. Same thing for the width. So what, are, what what's somebody supposed to do in order to fix this? Well, actually very easily, you just add zeros around the image, like so. And if you do that, you get the same size output as the input. Just that in this case, well, you also sum over some garbage data, which conveniently happened to be zero, so it's not quite that bad, but you know, it's one thing that you could do. So in this case here, in the example, well, we actually have a three by three image convolved with a two by two kernel. And if I did this naively, well, I would get a two by two output. Remember, that was the 19, 25, 37, and 43. But if I want to possibly even enlarge things, what I can do is I can just pad it with zeros all around. And then I get a larger output. Now, whether that larger output makes any sense is a different question, but at least the shapes work out OK. Any questions so far? OK. It's, it's really e simple stuff, but it can get you if you're not careful. So a couple of common things is you take square kernels, and then you take odd numbers. You basically you know, take you know, the height minus 1, floor of that, well, height minus 1 divided by 2, correspondingly the width. If I have a 3 by 3 kernel, then I pad by 1 pixel left and right and bottom and top. If I have a 5 by 5 kernel, well, I need 2 pixels on either side, and then things don't change the shape. And this will start to matter as we go and combine different convolutions of the same image together. So for instance, there's this architecture called Inception. And for that, this is vital because otherwise you won't be able to, you know, pad things together. It do just doesn't make any sense in terms of dimensionality. Any questions? Um, silly question. Why do people typically use convolutional kernels with an odd size? So why do people typically use, you know, 3 by 3, 5 by 5, 7 by 7, but you rarely see a 2 by 2 convolution. Well, one reason is that those 2 by 2 convolutions will change the size of the output relative to the input. Unless you do weird things with the padding where you only pad on one side rather than the other, but that's really weird. So now, the next thing that we need is stride. And so, in some cases, we actually want to reduce dimensionality. What you can do there is, you don't really compute all the entries, but you leave out every second 
or maybe the second and the third or, you know, basically you have a stride of K at which you subsample the matrix. So if you look at this matrix here, you might subsample only those entries, right? Maybe these as well. And you leave out everything else. In this way, you can very quickly reduce the dimensionality. There are other sometimes more elegant ways of doing that, namely in combination with pooling, where you may take the average or the maximum of adjacent pixels. But at least with strides, you can also manipulate the size. Any other questions? Can I ask what are the green What they are? Well, these are different filters. So as you move over, you get this smaller one. Okay. Let's actually have a look. Here's what happens. We have like a stride of two and three. And yeah, you can see how this goes. It's fairly straightforward and self-explanatory. So now here's a little bit of slightly more detailed reasoning. So if you have you know, a certain stride, well, then what you do is you use the corresponding you know, output size divided by the strides, and you take the floor of the corresponding integers. The floor because, well, if there's not enough space left for another jump, let's say, you know, the Next row would be over there. Well, that just doesn't make it. So you always run down. Okay, so the good thing is that most modern deep learning frameworks by now actually use automatic size and shape inference, so you don't have to. So this sounds still kind of straightforward, but if you have maybe 50 layers and you change one layer, then all those changes will propagate through, through the subsequent layers, and so it becomes ridiculously hard to write some code. So in the, quote, old times when people, for instance, used CAFE or whatever, CAFE version one, then you might have had a situation where you actually would have had to write some maybe Python code to generate a CAFE definition script to manipulate the various sizes. So you would have to write some scripting code to generate code to de generate your deep network. By now, this is all automatic and you don't have to worry about it anymore. So life's good. And that's it for the strides. 